up, everybody, and welcome back to the Verzi Effect Podcast Show. My name is Paul Verzi, and you guys listening to episode 566. I don't know what that is for as far as in the studio. It's a lot less than that. But um, I want to let you guys know I really appreciate all of the rating and reviewing of the show. Since we've been in here, you guys have been uh, really on top of it, and it helps the show uh, move up. So thank you so much for that. Get the Verzi Effect Podcast everywhere you get your podcast, iTunes, uh, you guys know where Spotify, the whole deal. And I want to, first of all, before I even get into this, I got another great guest today. Before I get into this, I want to thank everybody who came out, uh, showed out big Gotham Comedy Club uh, last week, Thursday and Friday. The place was fucking mobbed and it was fans. And I can't thank you guys enough. If you're in the Chicago area, uh, I don't know when this is coming out. I'm going to be in Pittsburgh on Valentine's Day. Tickets are moving really fast for that. I'm only doing one. And then um, I'm going to be at Zany's in Chicago, March 2nd through the 4th. Then I'm going to Rhode Island. Then I got all kinds of dates. Denver, uh, Salt Lake City. I got fucking uh, Tampa. Just so many. Atlanta, Raleigh, uh, Charlotte. Go to for those, uh for those dates. And again, thank you guys so much. Now, my guest this week on the show is uh, somebody that... Have you ever done the show before? Long no, time ago? no, maybe he's on Zoom during the pandemic. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Long mm-hmm. time ago. Uh, super funny um, New York-based comic and uh, making his way through the ranks. Going to be at the Gramercy Theater, which is definitely a big deal, uh, especially in this city. Mike Cannon is on TVE this week. What's yeah. up, brother? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. This is, uh, this is awesome, this space. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's like, it's one of those where it's not like, you ever go, some of these like you go to and it's like a fucking, it's like the Ellen set. It's like, <laughs> yeah. all right, so relax. It's like, we're, it's like we're dickheads yeah. talking shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's People, like, I get it, but. <laughs> the amount of comics that are going to go flat broke trying to keep up with Schultz. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, they're yeah. like, well, he has, he has the Steve Wilco set, so I have to, yeah. I have to create yeah. my own. Yeah, it's like he had money to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let him do it's it. It's like, listen, man, get a, you know, so like I look at updates. I'm like, oh, you know, we'll throw like a, ta- a tablecloth on this. <laughs> like my yeah, shit yeah. is like, you know what? Right we got the sign. You. We got the, we got great, uh, you know, great sound, great mics. But that's kind of where it, that's you know, it. It, it's, that's it. We got, we got uh, Jiggy sitting in that's for right. uh, Big Mike Albanese. Uh, you guys know uh, Jiggy from Practical Jokers opens up for those guys. Uh, he came in. We called the bullpen. Yeah, we, like he said, we had to go to the bullpen. We had to, Mike was. I was like, Mike. I, I was like, Mike. We got to get in studio, man. I got some guests, and he's like, I'm out of town. And then he's like, I could call Jay. I was like, Call him. Call him. So thanks. <laughs> It'd be funny if like all of your shit was fuck ups. Like he's yes. talking, it's on yeah. me. Then like there's one camera just on the logo as you're like crying. <laughs> you go into like the deepest podcast story of your like oh, yeah. career, and yes. he's just like, Oh, dude, guys, can you guys come back in here? Uh, we lost that. Uh, <laughs> we but- did that to Sagalo. Sagalo told a 35 minute <laughs> no. story about telling his girl that he loved her for the first oh, time. My God. And like after the episode, I was like, oh man, I never pressed record. <laughs> like not even oh, not even bent down to do him, it. Right? No, totally didn't do it. We lost the episode forever. It's oh, a big sticking God. point for our relationship. Prank? Yeah, not at all. Oh my <laughs> no, God. It's a real problem. Yeah. I that's why I need this. I need this. I need a producer. Yes. I need that because there was one time where, dude, I did a Verzi effect from my home studio. And when I turned everything off, I go, dude, that that's going viral. This is gonna be something, dude. And I sent it over to Andrew Themlis, who's the producer of mm-hmm. All Things Comedy. Yeah, yeah. And dude, he just goes, Verzi, he goes, the sound was off, dude. He goes, I hit the so the on these things, I hit the when I went like this to talk, my hand hit mute. Oh and my dude, seven minutes in. And dude, I'm just like, you just see like Dude, and I'm just going, is there any way to fucking reverse it? <laughs> the most impassioned speech. Dude, I think I even the... left. I told Stacy, I go, dude, I just did a bang. I just did one that's hard. Uh, and, and then all of a sudden, like, I send it out, and I get a text from Themis going, hey, did you have some with the sound? And I'm like, no. And then I went, and I just oh saw my, my God. And I saw the passion, but uh-huh. like, it looked like I was doing sign language. Dude, it was <laughs> fucked up, man. It, it hurt because, and then I tried to duplicate it, yeah. and you just can't. No, no. Like, like it was still a decent one, but I even told the fan, I go, guys, 
I like I kind of said this already, but it was this is different and it sucked. Yeah, yeah. It sucked. It happened. That's happened to me once. I I've had sex on camera successfully once. Like I've tried it a couple times, really? but one time where I like really laid it down. Like it captured a performance that I was proud of. And yeah. in classic fashion, uh, the cat sat in front of it the entire oh time. God, so I'm like, dude, great. I made it over ten minutes. This is on record. Like You're, this is yeah. great. You're sending it to Bang Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, figure it out how to You're just... like, dude, just muffle my face, but I got to get I'm this I'm trying to out motion there. blur my um, wife, you know? <laughs> dude, what's the thing? You know, it's funny you said that. What's your thing on... Because I can't fuck with my wife in bed mm -hmm. with the animals in the room, dude. Yeah. Like, when the dog comes in and shit, like, the dog just looks... Like, even the... I'm like, everyone's got to be out, man. Like, yeah. even, obviously, I don't... The kids can't be home. Like, I don't even... We don't do that oh, shit. Oh, it's on the... Yeah, you... can't do the kids home, because my kids are at the age where they need shit. They want shit. They're, when they were babies, were you able to make it through while they were crying? No. No? No crying. Damn. No, no, no. Like, I'm not one of, like... You got to be... <laughs> you got to compartmentalize. You, you got to be a you're psychopath. Like, ah, and you're like, shit, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, you just... <laughs> all right, section, section that off to an untouched part of my brain, and I'm going to just focus on the pussy. Dude, yeah, you had some trauma in your life if you could yeah. finish through crying. And I can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I can he's and fine. I have. He's fine. <laughs> it's the Ferber method. She's like, what if he's hungry? He's fine. <laughs> he's good. Uh, <laughs> Let him wait it out. Yeah, the, do the dog and the cat thing. I just can't like that's really funny the cat sat in front of the camera oh yeah immediately I mean yeah. I'm not <laughs> cats are like a problem with me in general I'm not a cat guy but I've grown to like them and tolerate them through my wife yeah. but but like I knew when I was getting to my worst like most degenerate masturbation practices yeah. when like this is before my son was born my wife would be out and I would just fold the blanket over my cat instead of kick it off wow. the bed yeah. like I'd watch it that's existing funny. and breathing under the blanket and i'm just like all right just try to try to pretend that's not happening that's hilarious dude i can't even do anything in the bathroom if i see family members clothes from like a shower <laughs> i'm, I'm dying dude i'm dead serious no i swear to god dude there's like a nicks shorts so i'm like i can't i <laughs> that's the guy's honest dude, truth my... i'm like well, somebody, and i act like i'm off this clean dad will somebody keep the bathroom straightened and meanwhile, I'm like, yeah, dude, I can't. It's my son's spirit lingers. I can't, I can't have him around for this. Yeah, there's hair ties. I'm like, yeah. no, dude, no, I can't. I need it. Like nobody. Yeah, I'm That's... a weird. I'm a weird. Uh, I'm weird like that. I've, no, but I, that makes that to me makes more sense yeah. than the person that's like, I could I could jerk off in front of company. Like yeah. it's no problem no. whatsoever. It's like I I get the isolation, no dude. Yeah, like company. Yeah, nah, I mean, for me personally, and I don't know if you grew up during this era, but like. I would jerk off at sleepovers. Like, that was kind of a thing. Wow. Because porn was limited. There was only, a, like, a single tape and one TV and a mom out for, like, 30 minutes to the grocery store. And so wow. you had to get it in right there. But Howard Stern, 2 a.m., just jerking off to pixelated tits while my buddies were dozing off. This is, like, before HD? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I didn't even have cable. Like, I was purely a try to unscramble, like, you know, you know those paintings that you look at and you can see a pirate show? If you relax your eyes enough, <laughs> that's what I was doing to the porn. <laughs> that's hilarious, dude. I would have to mute uh, Sports Center coming up. Like even Sports Center, I couldn't. <laughs> like like anything. Yeah, there would have to be no like distractions. But now I think about it. Like when you're coming up with your friends, yeah, I'm trying to think like if your friends are in the same room and a porn's on, everyone just gets behind the couch and it's okay. Yeah, yeah there was some really kind of. Uh, my fr my friend Rob jerked off in the movie theater, and I remember That's that level. like going and and we were with him, but he and he did it as like a brag. How old were you guys? We we're like twelve, like in the just in the heat of things, you know. But I remember it it's being like Transformers. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was total like Patch Adams or something insane. It was like a non sexy movie at all, and it was more like a fellas want to see what I can do. And then he like uh, dude, showed Patch us. Patch Adams his... is funny because he's just talking, making sick kids laugh. Yeah. That's like the Sick as fuck. Yeah, puts a clown uh, nose, tosses a 90 year old woman in a pool of spaghetti. And he's like, I gotta come to this. <laughs> Dude, that, like, yeah, dude, jacking off in a movie theater is that's, in a non-porn. Non-porn, yeah. And young, that's yeah. wild. Yeah, there's something going on I mean, at listen, home. listen, things happen hammered drunk. Right. Blackout drunk, there's been times where I've been like, dude, what, like that I wish I wish I had back. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. There, there are certain oh, my things. God. But, like, knowingly... The worst thing I ever did as a kid in a movie theater was my my buddy's dad took us to see Tombstone, uh -huh. 
and he just dropped us. Yeah, you know, yeah. Tombstone, yeah, right? yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's one of my favorite yeah. westerns, actually. And we brought in uh, beer. We brought in cans of beer. Oh we yeah. Were young, oh yeah. And we were slugging beers, and then we, I guess we got in the car, and he called my mom, and he was like, "Yeah, like, he smelled like beer. Like he was drinking beers in Tombstone." <laughs> Which now looking back is kind of gangster. That's that's a proud father moment, to be honest. Like, look at this mother Wyatt Earp looking motherfucker <laughs> just going in there slugging beers. Dude, slugging beers in your teens yeah. at Tombstone is kind of some, but. but Oh, here's the only bad thing. I think it was like Bush <laughs> or like Bush Light. Yeah, yeah, Like that yeah. cheap shit when you're yeah. a kid. Even that, but that's okay as long as it wasn't like a wine cooler or something yeah, insane yeah. where you're just like, well, this is just sending a lot of messages. Yes. Well, let's talk about That's what I wanted to talk to you about because you are you do some shit that I, I can't do where you fuck with psychedelics. Yeah, and yeah. You'll, you'll do the, the mushrooms and you'll do all that shit. And that's, that's all stuff that like I'm afraid of, but I'm also like my anxiety mm -hmm. and things. I think- my mental illness is better with things that are like I would say booze. Sure. Couple drinks and I'm feeling good. Even like e I would say like even an edible, the right mm -hmm. amount, the right yeah, yeah. amount of of edible that's not you know two hundred. You know some of these <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. you know, like wild things that I saw. Joey Diaz did some shit. He's well, another level. Well, he dude. Was yeah, like, I mean, he took some shit that would literally probably put me in the hospital for a month. Yeah, a couple thousand milligrams. Like yeah, he that's is like like, the like for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that would hospitalize a rhinoceros. Like truly, any animal that was taking that for the first time would would end up in an emergency situation. Like I took one that was probably I would say. I mean, I remember they said the chocolate bar was like really potent. Mm. I took a little more. It was macadamia. I didn't feel anything. The classic story: you don't feel anything for the first hour. Then I took a little more, dude. And I was like, for nine hours, I was in a really weird. I was fucked yeah. up, man. I had to like, oh, yeah. sleep it off. Wanted to go to the hospital. And then I see what some of these people do. And I'm just going, dude, how is that fun to be that? But you don't take it to that level, right? Like, I mean, I do on occasion. I, I personally like to see, I like to be brought to the edge a little bit. I like yeah. to look over the edge of the cliff and just yeah. see, see if I'll slip off. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm my, my, Dose typically is 100 milligrams. So that's, that's fucking crazy, dude. It's a lot, but I, I've gotten used to it, but it's a lot, and it still gets me really high. So when I say that, I'm not like a big swinging dick or anything. I'm no, just no. saying that's like, that's how high I like to get, which is very. But you're used to it. Yes. And you, yeah, have, yeah. Uh, you have a tolerance for it. I I've been in those woods a long time, man. I could walk those trails with my eyes closed. Right, right. Yeah. They, like, you know that. Yes. You know that yeah. world. 100%. So like, when I did, I was on Ari's show. And we talked about it, and then I was, and, and when I did Rogan, he said that he likes to go to a place that's kind of dangerous, or mm -hmm. that's scary. And 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 then I did Ari, and I mentioned that to Ari, and Ari was like, "Yeah." And that to me is like, Ari will take it to a, another level where not only will Ari do that, but he'll do it in fucking Thailand. Like, <laughs> yeah, by yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's yeah. a fun. Like he'll be in like a hot tub mm -hmm. with strangers in Thailand on another thing, and it's like, dude, that is for me. Like I gotta get high at my house. Sure, with yeah. My loved ones. You're in, or on your native soil, <laughs> like at the very <laughs> least. Or America. Yeah, that, yes. Dude, doing it, like, because I didn't even, we went to Bali for our honeymoon, yeah. and the Gili Islands is like, I mean, that's a that's a Muslim country, so it's actually pretty strict. It's, you know, it's there's no drugs, like really severe penalties for drugs. But the Gili Islands are like they're, you know, Mexico, girls gone wild, they okay. sell mushrooms, they have acid, shit like that. Really? But still, if you get caught s smoking a joint, you have to, like, bribe the cops, or they're there's always a situation. People have still done time. Like, it's it's fucking gray area and dicey. So I wouldn't touch it the right. entire time because there's nothing I can think of that will put that will destroy everything that you've earned from psychedelics. Yes. Just from the panic of being like, I'm in another country. What the fuck am I doing? I have no control over this situation. Dude, like Brittany Griner might have been high and like <laughs> Vladimir Putin's Dude. fucking soldiers put her in a cell. Dude, I would be. Dude, I'm scared to go to Stop and Shop High. Dude, if I was in a fucking Russian prison on yeah. CBD, yeah. and they were just... <laughs> Dude, if I was in a Russian prison on CBD, and they were like, you'll be here for nine, the, I'd be like, what? Call my mom. Dude. The moment they're like, duh, and you're like, get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, th but that's like... Will your girl do it with you when you guys are together or no? She's like, so she does sometimes, but she was a huge, uh, she was a huge pop person during like high school and college, right. and I, I didn't. I still thought I was gonna I be in the like, NBA. She, she grew up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she in grade yeah. school. Yeah, this is. A, I am a, I am a classic. What, what is that? Cautionary tale 
for for having your kid not do any drugs or drink during high school or anything like that. So I didn't drink during high school. Oh, so I didn't do drugs during high school. Yeah. And then once I finally did, yeah. I hit the ground sprinting. Yes. And I was doing coke within a few months of yeah. like starting to drink. I so was you really went, So you did opposite of me. Yeah. See, my mom would get phone calls like I started drinking and I would test drinking at like 13. Yeah, see you're the guy at the fucking college party with a Manhattan cuz you've seen this I, before. I, I, yeah, I did it all, dude. <laughs> yeah. I started drinking in my first drink drink my buddy introduced me to my first drink and by the way just for any listeners i'm not like not I, luckily i'm not an alcoholic i just go hard and have fun yeah yeah but you know you obviously got to grow up at some point right um i the first drink that i did was somebody said uh Captain Morgan and ginger ale. Oh, yeah. Because Captain Morgan and ginger ale, if it's made right, tastes like cream soda. Yeah, sure so does. That, and I was like 16. So I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and I loved cream soda. Yeah, who so doesn't? I was like, this isn't. And then, and then I would be, you know, get bars, fake ID. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Yeah. The blacking out, the partying, the sneaking out, the fake IDs, going to clubs. That was like, when I did that, like all the kids I went to college and did that, yeah, I was yeah. like, this is fucking Mickey Mouse. This, is, this right. is minor leagues. Yep. But I had friends like you who kind of were more straight narrow athletes yeah um you know and then all of a sudden they get a taste of it and then they <laughs> it's over. just go yeah yeah and it's almost like i don't know what's i guess it's i don't know what's worse because when you're a kid doing it the way i did it i'm very lucky to be okay sure yeah yeah be 16 and be like dude we were in college funneling funneling vodka oh yeah funneling yeah yeah, yeah. and like the only thing that would like sub like take a little of the edge off was they would take a scoop of uh like iced tea mix yeah, yeah. but it's still absolute <laughs> dude we used to make i because i i read i read tucker max at an impressionable age too do you know that guy no, no. He's, so he he used to have like these uh these first hand account story books about being a blackout drunk piece of shit about banging like strange women but, midgets but had a like problem. blah blah blah. Like, no, no, like no. Or no. No, he was like party, party guy, R and okay. I cool. And me thinking that was cool at that yeah. time in my life, I was like, This guy's the fucking man. I love how he rolls. And he made this thing, it was like <laughs> ju it was jungle juice, but like to the fourteenth power, so we made we had Everclear grain alcohol. We had uh, a third, a third of that, a third Red Bull, and a third Gatorade, and then and we put wow. this into a huge tub, and yeah. then we dumped Rainbow Sherbert into it. So it tasted like like, like it was delicious, like Oz. It was yeah. fucking and, and unbelievable. And People were blind. <laughs> like by the end yeah. of the night, it was like dangerous because the it's yeah. like a hundred and eighty proof alcohol or whatever yeah. grain alcohol is. It was pure insanity now as a father because i i look at this too it's like some of the things now my son and I, your son's obviously not old enough for mm. this, but my son is crushing basketball yeah yeah almost put up 30 he had back to back games with 20 his shots incredible all that they're like they talking about him playing var he's in eighth grade that's and awesome they want him to play varsity next year hell yeah and I, I want to play JV. Just I can't one believe year. It, he's in eighth grade, dude. That's yeah, dude, crazy. he's like spread, like he's like he's he's the, he got he's getting taller. The doctor said he didn't have a growth spurt mm. and all this stuff, and also on a roll all the yeah, time, yeah. right? And I'm like, dude, if he did anything that I did, mm. or any kind of any kind of even, but I realized I realized what I did it for. Mm. I did it for to be funny, yeah. to be cool, for attention. It's like you said, all the cool kids were doing it. Oh yeah, the cool popular kids were the kids who would do fucking keg stands. I would do naked keg stands, <laughs> and I was like had to have the record in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Ninety seven seconds, <laughs> motherfucker. You know what I mean? And like people would walk through the hallways. Like, yeah. like dude, I heard Verzi had ninety seven seconds, and I'd be like, yes, I did. And like that Saturday, you put your jersey <laughs> next to the basketball players. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you got your jersey in the yeah. basketball gym for 40 points in a game, 97 seconds, That's upside right. down, right in bitch. the principal's office. <laughs> yeah, and but these are things that like, like, and like you, I'd be in the car with kids that tried to show off speeding. Oh yeah. And we we always joke we'd be in the back seat, be like, yeah, man, it ain't worth it. Yeah. You'd be scared. Yeah, and, dude. And, but your friends would like it'd be, and you just think of your son or your son or daughter being in that situation. Yeah. Like and it's absolutely terrifying. Yeah, yeah. To think of like what I did, and now my mom, when my mom would worry and like be like, "I'm worried about you," mm -hmm. and she would cry. Yeah, and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And, yeah. and like now you look at you like, "Dude, yeah." And that's before like Nancy Grace and social media and yeah. stuff. Like people weren't inflaming their fears as much. But dude, I speaking of just like 
like yeah, you're for right. real, like just being you're like right. the kids are on weed and they're gonna kill everyone like that shit it didn't exist <laughs> as much that's right but like i re i remember being in the back of my buddy's volvo we're listening to notorious thugs we're doing like 75 in a school zone wrapping around this corner and we're like pumping our fists and immediately ended up in the woods like wow. like crashed the car wow. missed critical trees and we're all just like well we're good learn nothing and just continue to like live our life. Yeah, you almost get out invincible. Yeah, like, yeah fuck you. We're good. <laughs> Told you. Airbags. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's built to protect. <laughs> <laughs> Volvo, high safety rating. No, but that's that's really like I think of that man with my children, and I'm like, you ain't getting in certain kids, and I can mm. tell. And this is one thing my mother was always good at. My mother could tell the kids that were problems. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and now that I could see my son's friends, I mean, we're in a small community, and I, and I gotta say, most of the kids are good kids. Mm -hmm. But you know who's gonna be yeah. like a little dickhead. Well, you also know which parents are shitheads. Well, that's what it is too. <laughs> yeah. it's like you can look at the parents and be like, oh, yep. they got fucking insecure parents. Yeah. Like, so then they have to prove. Yeah. You know, your son is still. You're, you got to be a real piece of shit to know if a three-year-old sucks. <laughs> yeah, and I do know one or two already. Yeah, 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 for you sure. Kind of tell. There's, right? there's like some. There's parts to them where they're like. There's the kids are toddlers are empathetic and also not at the same time. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they can exhibit both the most like heart filled human connection to somebody and then yeah. also like sh show murderous yeah. like lack of connectivity to yeah. people. It's, it's wild. But there is like that that healthy mix. You can kind of tell when somebody just goes like when some three year old goes full shark eyes and like their eyelids are from the side and <laughs> just glaze yeah. over like yeah. a fucking snake. You're like. Yeah. Yeah, that that is a problem. And then you see the the parents. You're like, ah, yes. oh, yeah, yeah. That's where it they is. They have a rat tail Did still. You see <laughs> <laughs> dude, I had a rat tail in fifth grade. Uh, <laughs> dude, um, did you see? I got a. I don't know how we could show this jig. I don't think we can. But on my Instagram story, did you see this? I'm gonna try to put this up. This is the first time I ever tried this, so I don't know if it's gonna work. But did you see the kid? Who told the teacher shut the fuck up? Yeah, sure did. The little the little boy. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude. Oh, this is. Hold on. Hold on. It it's funny, man. <laughs> dude, that kid, dude, that kid is yeah. all jokes aside, that kid is like six. Yeah. <laughs> And dude, he and like I was just like, is he like a genius old soul? Yeah. <laughs> I, Cause he did it. In yeah. A, he did it in a way. He didn't do it in a way. He that took, was prior esque delivery. Like he took yeah. it in. Yeah, yeah. Like when she was like, "Hey, parents. Hey, boys and girls." And he just had like a old school. Shut the fuck yep. up, bitch. Like <laughs> something phony about her sing songy delivery hit him dude, in the wrong way. Yeah, it's like yeah. when I first heard it, I'm like, "That's a bad kid." But then I'm just. Like maybe he knows something. Like, cause then she yeah. was like, "Do you need to leave?" And he goes, "No, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> how, all... how great would it be if you found out in the future she was like fucking his dad? Oh yeah, ruining yeah. the marriage. <laughs> like he knew something, dude. That was like calculated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As much as I was like, "That's a bad kid," which obviously you can't. Dude, There's that. a couple things that need to happen after that. Is one that kid needs to be taken out of that classroom and hugged immediately, like instantly. Like, are you okay? Is everything going on? Absolutely. Then there, then there needs to be a full scale investigation into his parents and his home life because then it's like, what, how often are they talking to him, each other, like everything like that? Yeah, that's what somebody said to me. Somebody's like, in order for that kid to talk like that, yeah, what he's hearing at home. Is, is absolutely nuts. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's like everyday language for him. Yeah, yeah. How confident he was. He, and the th thing is, he didn't say it with any fear of consequence behind it. Yeah. Like, he didn't He didn't go, like, he didn't say, like, no. shut the fuck. He was like, he fucking This hit. is what I mean, and it's oh. appropriate for oh, me to my. say. But I don't like how they were like, no thank you. It's like, <laughs> hey, hey, out, hey you know, buddy, one please. One guy was in the back, like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's the white dad that like wants to be stern but also knows it's his like cultural place. Guy. Oh, yeah. hey. get him out! Get him out! No, thank you, dude. You grab that kid. You gotta honestly, yeah, like, yeah, you gotta take him out. But you gotta grab the kid stern. by his wrist, take yeah. him outside, and go, dude. You can't. And, and then you gotta call the father. Oh my god, dude! That was yeah, check the mom for bruises. <laughs> then, yeah, the father must be. Hard. Oh my god, with the bitch is like, cause it it also That's felt right. like dismissive towards women intentionally, where it's like the teacher and he's like, shut 
Yeah, bitch. <laughs> Just the littlest talcum powder pimp slap of That's all his time. Dad watching his favorite program and his wife is saying something. He's watching game show. Shut up, bitch. Dude, I heard my son. This is how shit like sne- is, is, is seeps in, right? Because I don't curse in front of my son, or at least that oh, I know okay. that yeah, I know we try. of. We try. Not. We try. Well, they try. Right, but right. but I'm listening to him play the other day, and he's by himself, and he's playing with his superheroes, and he's like smashing into shit, and we're just like, you know, whatever. And then out of nowhere, I'm like, he goes, man, that's some wild ass shit. And I'm he like, said that? I'm like, yo, dude. And he's like, oh, sorry. And I'm like, I'm like, what was that? He was like, that was Black Panther. And I was like, wow, that was kind he of, uh, yeah. I was shit. like, that's a little dicey to. God, it's the shit. <laughs> this is the, this is what's gonna happen, and it's an it's an unfortunate thing. But it's also like real life mm. where my son, because he's three years older than Sophia yeah, and yeah. Lucas. So he's the one that really, like, there's a purity of your child, right? Yeah. And I know everybody listening to this knows that there's a purity and an innocence where they go from watching McQueen and Cars <laughs> and, and to all these beautiful things and, you know, Frozen and fucking Little Mermaid. They're just like the thing. And then all of a sudden they hit five and six and they're like a little more edgy. Mm. But then what happens is, and we were talking about it before with the shithead kid, the, the friends, the, they, the older kids sit in the back of the bus. Yeah, yeah. So when you're in kindergarten, you sit right behind the driver. Mm-hmm. Then when you're in first, a little further yeah, back, yeah. and it goes all the way back. And then when you're the big dog, you're in the back. Yeah. Now the big dogs who are in fifth grade in the back say some horrible shit. Oh, yeah. And my son has come off the bus and said, Dad, what does this word mean? And I mean, it's words that I can't say on this podcast. I mean, it's words that you're just like, wait, what? You're and like, they're like, yeah, what are your said- friends listening to the Kumia network? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it is like, it is. It, I'm going, wait, what What word? And he's like, yeah, they said it. I just want to know what it means. And I'm like, listen, that's that's bad. And he, But like, talk about everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. homophobic yeah. shit. Like saying, and I'm just going like, buddy. But like, he comes off like, what's this word mean? Yeah, and it's yeah. just the most horrible shit. <laughs> and that's where you start to see the innocence so i feel like when that sh- as a parent when that shit starts to happen yeah that's when you gotta like kind of come in 100 and, and play coach well and that's what's interesting about like you know my son is doing full days now for preschool slash daycare like it's educational daycare gearing up to whatever and it, it's like you know when you're when you're you just have them they are pure uncut cocaine and then you send yep. them out to the world and they start getting influenced. So right. it's like your Coke starts getting stepped on. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. all of a sudden you can't even recognize your supply like, because it, yeah, there's so much baby laxative and God knows what <laughs> all over it. But like my son came back with a brand new personality yeah. after like a month being there. And I'm like, damn, dude, all, all of a sudden you're like quicker to come back at me. You're like a little more grown up, a little more like, hey, man, take a step back type shit. Yes. And I'm like, this is fucking wild and heartbreaking. And he's gonna start challenging you more. Oh yeah, yeah. And like that, you know, like that, that was like the joke in my in my special with the basketball. The closing joke is like when he said, "Let's fucking go," because he was treating his sister a certain way, and then he shot and he started to like go at me. Yeah. And like he does this thing now where like he shot like yesterday he shot like four hundred shots and I was rebounded for him. Mm. And when he misses, you know, and he's he's like motherfucker, and I'm like whoa, dude. Like, <laughs> Like, he acted like he was in, like, West Fort yeah. I'm like, it's not that, you know, it's like, come on, dude. We're up in the country. Yeah, you're, not, yeah. you know, you're not exactly playing against, like, Earl Maddox or the GOAT. You know, or, like... He's doing the stuff. Yeah, he, he would be like, fuck, man. And is he doing like, that on the court? Is he doing the two no, small that, that, no, celebrate? No, 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 no. He won't do that. He doesn't... Uh, he's very... He's actually very humble, and he doesn't like to... Like, if somebody gets their ankles broken, mm-hmm. he's not like, a, oh, he's yeah, not yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll, like, kind of... you He could feel it, yeah. but he doesn't... My, the nice thing about my son and and it's a testament I, I hope to us and my daughter too is never making somebody feel mm-hmm. like I remember one time he was playing flag football and his team did like a, a great play and then they all sat down like they were in a canoe <laughs> like they're doing they're doing this shit where they all sat down uh-huh. in a straight line and they're doing a canoe and like him and one other kid didn't do it wow and the guy throws a flag I think he even took the touchdown he freaked no he kidding he freaked the fu- like it was a, like yeah, he was yeah. one of those refs yeah. that take it too seriously, but this was a good moment of it. Yeah, like he takes it, he took he was like flag like and he was like what are you and like me and Stacy like Luke like I could tell Lucas 
might have wanted to, but sure. he was like, I can't do it. Yeah, like, yeah. He didn't want it. The other teams just looking at her like rowing and like they were like it was like yeah. the, it was like a planned Super Bowl celebration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like they were like, dude, if we score in the Super Bowl, we have to be bowling. hundred percent that's so <laughs> fucking funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? See, I I, I never want to come off as like that the old white guy being like, not in today's game and like all that fucking insane shit. But it does bum me out when you're watching TikTok and you see some like seven year old going, going like, to too, too small. small. Yeah. Fuck off me all that yeah. like kd being like good one wa- good job little kids and it's like yeah i understand the shit talking and stuff and it's fun or whatever but to like blatantly teach non-sportsmanship and yeah. screaming in people's faces yeah, and yeah. not being a good winner loser all that shit that like that flies in the face of what sports are in general that's right to me at I, least. I, I couldn't agree more i think like it's one thing to be like bitchy and not want fun and i don't think that that's what we're saying what we're saying is you could have fun but be a sp- like yeah. i think a cool part about sports is like when it's over yeah. even when you see ufc guys bludgeon each other yes. and then they hug each other because it's like hey we were just in war yep. even if like we talk shit in the press conference like we just fucking fought in a war and like hugging and all that stuff like not touching gloves unless somebody personally you know unless it's like real bad blood yeah that's a different thing but i'm glad you brought this up and uh listen Demise of people doesn't make me happy. Okay. Except. <laughs> I love the start ex- of this. Fu- except. Uh-huh. <laughs> all of you dummies in Brooklyn. I lo- There is oh, nothing yeah. more than this team getting dismantled. So they had beautiful. James Harden. They had. Sorry, Jig. Are you, you're looking at the screen like you're a Nets fan. I'm sorry if you are. Uh, you, Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, no, actually, to me, not worse. Yeah, yeah. To me, not worse. Yeah. To me, not worse. Yeah, no. the Knicks are so not there yet that it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, you guys are like, I never even looked at this. As a Knicks fan, yeah. I never really even looked at the Celtics no. ever as like, I look at the Miami Heat as mm-hmm. worse rivals. I, I Obviously, I yeah. look at the Pacers as Bulls. worse. I don't, yeah, all because yeah. of the history. Celtics, we obviously, we want to beat, but I don't have, there's not a venom. Even like Philly. Like Philly I, uh, and Boston uh, yeah, don't, not, it's not like not it is in other sports yeah yeah um but dude as a nick fan all of the shit talking Ugh. oh we got Kyrie, we got this and then do we went to we were joking on the phone we went to a brooklyn nets game every break we're brooklyn at brooklyn <laughs> we're brooklyn at, dude i saw a kid it's like what are you hearing brooklyn i saw a kid in a yarmulke yelling at a seven footer <laughs> He's going, you fucking suck, yeah. you bitch. <laughs> and it was just this like, little kid in a yama. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? In fairness, I was right after Kyrie made his comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the yarmulkes came out hard. <laughs> Dude, it was like they had like Yannicka night. Yeah, after man. like no, but dude, oh. it was uh, it was. It, it is a good feeling too because there was like there's substantial jealousy from me. I don't know if from you because like having that type of star power, we just haven't had it as Knicks fans at all. So no. seeing like and Kyrie is so outside of his preposterous personality on the basketball court, he's unbelievably so good. He's one of my favorite players to watch ever. Kyrie Irving was one of my favorite NBA players before. I would say, like, when he went, when he left Cleveland and went to the Celtics, mm. and he had the year with the Celtics, I, I actually said to my friends who were Celtic fans, I go, this is a great move. Yeah. He's great. And then, obviously, you realize he wasn't the one. No. He needed the one yeah, to yeah. be the two. Yep. And if he was the two, he would have, if he had didn't have the ego, they they could have went on. A, if him yeah. and LeBron stayed together and made sure they stayed together, I think they would have. Yeah. They would have. But, look, I get it. It was Cleveland. They This is a super team era. But, dude. Kevin Durant is, is it doesn't seem like a great guy. He no, so much, dude. Like, I mean, he at least seems like he, he's a he's a bummer of a dude in the sense that like his whole actually that's a great word for it. he's like a bummer. Yeah, his whole personality is like is basically pissing on fun. And like yes. it, it's just like we it get it, dude. Through. You're laid back and you smoke weed. It's like me too. But yeah. am, am yeah. I like trying to just be like nothing matters? Yeah, like bummer is a good like. He's just like you could see that he's just. And I remember hearing something where he just didn't seem like a happy fucking guy. No, and then very like clearly like kids like going up to kids and be like, take that jersey. And it's just like, dude, play, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I actually saw Giannis said something funny. He goes, dude, I think they get upset that their whole life they have to like duck under things. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> It's like just you built have, up you resentment. To, you have to mentally use energy to go into a room. I, I don't think that's bad. I don't I think that's far off. That. Imagine being, yeah. imagine, because most of your life is not basketball. No, that's inconvenient. 
if you're sick, because I remember uh, Andre the Giant. Mm -hmm. By the way, incredible doc, dude. The I Andre, still the, watch Andre that. the Giant has a couple of docs, but dude, there's one where like if you saw how the rest is soul, if you saw how the this guy lived, mm. like he had to buy a row on the airplane, yeah. and like it was, dude, he couldn't. He his dream and fantasy was to like be me and you. <laughs> Like his, dude, like he would look at me and just whack off to be a five eight. <laughs> dude, could you imagine me? Uh, uh, I wish I was just a um, regular man. Yeah. I don't know why I turned into Schwarzenegger. <laughs> but like, yeah, he, dude, like imagine, imagine being almost eight feet. Imagine yeah. being seven foot four. But he wasn't just seven foot four. No, he I bet was, his width was more of a problem. He was seven four four hundred. Yeah, and oh like just had that, but. Um, my buddy Joe Bartnick told me how he decided to end his life, that, mm -hmm. like how he died. And what he, it's like maybe the greatest thing ever. He was dying and knew. Yeah. He just went to France, got, went to a house in France <laughs> with his brothers and just drank wine and played cards until he died. That's. Fuck yes. Like, dude, that is Hell fucking... Hell yeah, dude. That 20 case. Yeah, like, dude, just <laughs> dude, he just probably had yeah. pallets, of, pallets of his favorite dude, red wine. Dude. He's with his brothers, who he loves the most, and they're playing cards, and he's just like, ah, like... <laughs> How funny were her... It was his last moments. <laughs> like, just blackout drunk, like... Ugh, and dude, the, bottle, <laughs> the wine in his hand <laughs> looked like those little... Tabasco's just <laughs> crushing Merlot <laughs> bottles by mistake. Just be like, ah. Dude, he had he had a fucking can of beer in his hand oh, yeah. that disappeared. Yeah, it looked like if me and you were holding a package of Tic Tacs, <laughs> like it didn't even look like it was there. Yeah, it was like two gulps. And he Those was little just, mouthwash cups that you get at the dentist. It, uh, who said it? it might, I don't know if it was it was either Ric Flair, Hogan, or it was one of those one of those big dudes, mm. one of those big wrestling like icons. Said that when Andre wasn't drinking. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a case was just like to like wash it like a case would just wash down dinner. Like they said, like when he wasn't drinking, 24 beers was like a, yes. like a snack. It was like a Capri Sun. It was just like Looking awesome, dude. He'd get like two thirty packs. He's going light. It was like, an off night. He was like kill another human. I love that, man. That's a. Uh... It's what. Yeah, they just don't. I, I, how could anybody's body take that? No. But I would love to. Like, was his were the insides of his body like? Was it fermented? Like, how how did it Dude, actually take that he much booze? Use a he couldn't use it like a normal toilet, man. He couldn't sit on a toilet. So he would have to like take the sheets of a fucking dude. He would have to like have a tarp and like He'd use shit. the tub. Dude, just no, yeah, like, if, if, like the tub was like just cutting it. His... <laughs> How big is the just, tub? Just like, they had to drill an extra large drain. They're like, this is just gotta dude, work I, for both. Dude. I actually like couldn't imagine like. Um, Cause like I remember I went to Nick's practice back mm. in the day when they practiced at SUNY Purchase. That's when Riley. That's when oh, Ewing yeah, was on yeah. team. And like for Ewing and David Robinson and Shaq, when those guys got like a like a Benz or a Mercedes, yeah. they would have to they would have an extended. Mm -hmm. Everything is extended. Airplanes like they can't. Shaq had to blow the front uh, seats out of his Porsche, and now he just sits in the back. <laughs> he, he literally like he took out the trash. Yeah, he's that's literally insane. sitting in the back seat. That's it. Like, dude, I gotta be honest with you. That's gotta be after your playing days. Yeah. And and in your regular life, that's gotta suck. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that's why Kevin Durant's a dick. No, no, or, but, but it could like, be a part of but it. Like, it's just like six. He was, Think about like Greg Oden, somebody who then didn't even get to play pro, and now you're trapped in this body forever with none of the perks. You just true. get approached by fucking old white ladies being like, "Did you used to play basketball?" Ball and his heart breaks on camera, and people post it on TikTok. Have you ever like seen for that? For ten minutes. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever seen that video? No, well, it's one no, of the. No, I saw when he's what when he's walking the campus. Yeah, so. and the lady's like, "Did you play basketball?" Oh. And he's like, "I used to," and like oh. smiles, and she walks away, and he's like, "Greg <laughs> like, Oden looked dude. ninety when yeah. he was at the draft. Yeah, yeah. He was one of those guys, but like, I felt bad, dude, because like every time he would like have like ten good games, he mm -hmm. would just be out for the year. <laughs> He played like 10 games, and you're like, oh, here it comes. And then he was in a suit for a year. <laughs> what was he? He was from that, um, the upstate town, the the murder house. What was it called? Uh, on Long Island, right? Uh, Amityville? Amityville, That's yeah. Because no. uh, on Is Slam he? Magazine, he did a cover, and it was called the Amityville Horror. And it was just him on the cover, and it's one of the fucking coolest covers of Slam Magazine ever. Oh, shit. Yeah. I didn't know he was from New York. Yeah, yeah. 
and then I know Ohio State, and mm-hmm. then I know when his career was over, he went back. And I he think got he's coaching degree. now, right? He might be coaching at o- uh, Ohio Imagine State. Hurt coaching. He <laughs> just, just like, gets Greg. up from the bench, just <laughs> knee to, folds backwards. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting on the bench in a suit, and, like the sub is in there because he can't. I know. I mean, I don't even mean, need to make fun because I really don't mean to make fun because he he was dominant when he played. He was unreal. He, yeah. When he played, he was like they were comparing yeah. him to Shaq. Yeah, yeah. They were like he would yeah. just turn around and yoke it on mm-hmm. kids in college. He was Embiid and, before Embiid. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. He would have been. It, it does suck to see, but you know what? I give the kid credit for going back to college. Yeah. That's got to be tough to just yeah. be like I'm gonna go get my degree. And I wonder is that prorated? Like, does he get to have his full scholarship back? That's a good question. I feel like with all the money he earned the school, even if he played for six minutes, it's like, yeah, he earned you a couple of, of full scholarships. Yeah, like so just like fucking let it ride. Yeah, yeah. Put it on the you put it on or the arm. It on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you went through enough, Craig. You went through enough. Um, yeah, dude. I, I, You know what's cool about talking about this? Because on the other podcast I do, well, me and Burr talk about, a lot about football. We don't talk a lot about basketball, mm-hmm. but... Having, I will tell you this, okay, and I think that, uh, though this is fun, this is a fun one, I could tell this is going, this is going, we're with 40, 40 something, yeah, this is great, um, I hope you're having fun. Yeah, I mean, this is great, this yeah. This is fucking great. So this is what's going to happen, and, and it's going to happen with you, I would say, probably in two years, because okay. that's when he's going to start playing ball. Dude, there is nothing. Like the other day, I'm sitting in the stands because because what happens is you see your son's flaws on a on a on a field or, or a court, mm-hmm. but then you also really see the strengths. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then when you see the flaws and the weaknesses become strengths, dude. My son, so like my son could always shoot. Everybody said he could shoot, and you know they he did really great shooter. And then he was like toughen up on defense. Well, this year he did toughen up on defense, dude. The other day I'm in the crowd and I'm watching my son, and he. Like early in the game, lay up two, he gets two points, then he pulls up a deep three, hits it. And I'm like, damn. Dude, he ended up with like almost 30. He hit, it got to the point where like when he would get the ball at the three, everyone knew it was coming. Like we were, like when Reggie would get yeah, the ball. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You're just, and dude, someone's like, who's leaving him open? Dude, he hit like six threes. That's and fucking I'm awesome. Sitting there, dude, and I am just going, like, my son is better than all of your stupid <laughs> But I can't say that. Yeah, but yeah. In your in your heart, and even if it's not true, mm-hmm. in your heart, watching your son dominate or your son with you, it's gonna be baseball first. Yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. little league first. Yeah, yeah. But your son's gonna rope a double and mm-hmm. be standing on second, and you're gonna be like, dude, the Yankees are gonna come here. Like the Yankee scouts are gonna. It's a delusion at first. hundred percent. It's a delusion yeah, yeah. at first. Mm-hmm. You know, and but the feeling of like when they're rounding and hearing people clap, because in a way it's like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Not in like a crazy living right. through way, because there's those yeah. guys. Oh my god, yeah. Who are like, what are you call-? like, dude? There are guys yeah. that like lose their fucking minds. I can't even believe. I, 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 those videos. I guess it's just like caught in my algorithm because I'm just like I love to be enraged. So all of all of the videos that pop up are just things that just immediately infuriate me. Like hyper involved parents at sporting events really piss me off when they get in the face of like a ref or something like that. Some dude making fucking thirty dollars, you know, just screaming at them for their shitty kid. I get insane. I like I don't know how I'm gonna keep myself from fighting somebody. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough, man. Like we we have volunteers. Mm. For high school kids. Yeah. So some seniors will come and like so I'm so this is the first year I didn't even tell you this yet. So I this is the first year that I'm an assistant coach of my daughter's fifth grade nice. team because my schedule I can't yeah, yeah. be like the main guy. Yeah. But I'm like the assistant and you know we're doing really good and you get out there. But what makes you want to win is not even so much for your kids. It's like the opposing coaches who take it like that. Yeah. And now like we're like eight and one. Right, and when <laughs> the other team scoring us, we see the bleachers. Everyone wants us to lose. We're yeah, like yeah. the Evil Empire. <laughs> and dude, I want to run it up. Yeah, I want to yeah. run it up. I'm like, if you guys like, like, dude, the other team will score a bucket, and everyone's like, they want us to. Right. Other parents of our team go, yo, dude, they want us to lose. Bad. And I'm like, you shouldn't have told me. That. <laughs> you shouldn't have told me that. Yeah. Now, you know. Yeah. And I was like yelling at my daughter one time to play defense, and she played defense on a girl that was older, mm. and really locked her up. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, and I went, I got really excited, and the mother of the girl that got locked up was like, come on, like she like from the thing tried going at me, and you start to see those things, yeah. and you're just like, oh, it's almost like. 
It's like their issue, but now I'm nuts. Right. Yeah. Like you took it out of me. <laughs> yeah, of course. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna, you know. But I gotta tell you, coaching is fun. I, I can't wait. Like that's the thing and you're where a I'm basketball at. Basketball kid. Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm at now. Where it's like I can't really. All the stuff is on the weekend, so I can't really help out just yet. And they need somebody firmly committed. But when it gets older and it's a little bit more, like then I can help out and do drill and stuff. I, I'm definitely gonna do uh, basketball for sure. Probably soccer too. But now you were a big basketball player, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I played. Two years of JUCO ball and then got hurt, but uh, yeah, I, I could play, and that's that's going to be the benefit is because like I I left a lot on the table. I think you know everybody says that, but I also grew up in a family that nobody else played sports, so nobody had other information to give me. My dad didn't know anything about basketball to the point where, dude, this is how white and spoiled I am. <laughs> we were. I was so pissed that I was like I was good at sports. My dad realized I was good at sports. Didn't care that I was good, but cared that other people thought I was good and then would come to the games and kind of like soak up the adulation of being the dad of the good kid. Yeah. So he would like yell some generic ass sports shit at me during the game. Like, come on, man, run faster. Come on, like grab it. Hustle. Yeah, like like nonsense. Yeah. To the point where, dude, in the middle of a fucking CYO game, I'm like nine. I finally, in the middle of my dad yelling, I have like 15 points. It's the third quarter or something. I turn to him and I go, oh, yeah, dad, what's a rebound? Oh, Tell me God. what a rebound is right now. <laughs> For real. Tell me what it is. You said that during the game? It, to silence. And people are like. Does oh. he not know how to fucking rebound? Oh, my. <laughs> Dude, my dad, like, I mean, talk about getting yoked off a fucking court. I got yoked off the court, brought into the bathroom, and was just like, are you fucking out of your mind? That's not how you talk to anybody. You know, they, they, I'm sure I got hit later. And that's but... why we do this for a that's living, right. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my dad didn't just say, oh, come on. <laughs> come on, don't. But, dude, the animosity. The animosity. <laughs> To have to do that mid game. Oh yeah. To go, what's a rebound, dude? That's there's so much behind what's a rebound. That was like, what's a good father? That's yeah. really what. <laughs> that's what that was. That was like, what's a good nurturing father? <laughs> Say something supportive. <laughs> do you love me? <laughs> Is that dude, followed up after you said what's a rebound? Funny would that? What would people do? Dude, if you if turn around and go, do kids? you love me, dude? They would be like. The level of confusion. Dude, I would give anything in my oh. life to, to have a kid in mid-game just have a dad yell and just stop. Do you love me? Dude, he would be like, I don't know what happened. Dude, that would be the greatest thing I've ever. That would be <laughs> outstanding, I mean, man. And that, that clip doesn't exist, but I want to. I got I to gotta make this Dude, we have to. We have to make this happen. <laughs> Are there any young fans? Just yeah. for the YouTube, just send it to the Verzi effect, please. Do you love me? Like, like he's just saying hustle. He's young. Yeah. Just, oh my, that would be the greatest thing that ever happened. That'd be the greatest thing that like there could be nothing. Yeah. Because it, it really says everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. would the embarrassment of him. The, mm. the ref would be like, <laughs> do, do, do you, you love him? Yeah. Do you, do you guys need to chat this out? It sounds like kind of an important thing. And then he gets up and goes, I do, and you guys just cry. <laughs> Game called. It's <laughs> over. Right. Take your ice cream, and you get, everything gets hashed out. Oh, my God. That's so, so when did you start, not to get too heavy. Yeah, yeah. Heavy at the end, right? Um, uh, when did you start to, like, realize that you did comedy or that you had issues with your dad? Um, I mean, right away. I First, I realized why I played basketball. And that's also why I do comedy. So basketball, yeah, yeah. I think I first of all it was the first bit of affirmation that I got from anybody was sports. So like being good at sport, and I was I was good young, like two years old. Yeah. I was hitting pitches and shit like that. So I had I had coordination young, and that was the first time people were like, "We like what you're doing. This is great." So yeah, I just like acceptance. geared toward and geared my whole life towards that. And then as I like started considering comedy i realized that i was playing basketball for the same reason i do comedy which is crowd response because i played very like flashy you wanted that you wanted that like kind of instant yeah yeah you know? dude there's nothing I, I still like i don't know if there's a laugh that even matches it, it it's like it's few and far between but there's like 
there's not much of a better feeling than like breaking somebody at a park and having it packed with people and people run on the court after you just fucking chop somebody up and hit some sort of crazy shot like, like that that like Wah! like the mix of sounds and feeling yeah. that you get after that it's like it's it's a blast of energy i couldn't yeah like to hit like a I couldn't imagine, like, I remember the feeling, I'm talking about it in my new hour, because Lucas, and I took Lucas to the Garden, Garden's one of my yeah, favorite places. Yeah, that's the know? best. And that playoff game we beat, uh, Atlanta game two, two years ago, yeah. I was at that game. Oh, that's awesome. And quickly throws an alley-oop from half court, and it looked like it was going to go over the backboard. So everyone's like, it looked, it looked, it was so far. Yeah, yeah. And Toppin was just coming, yeah. and Toppin caught it with his fingertips, and when it went in, it was a feeling and an explosion uh -huh. that I... That I couldn't imagine being on the court for, like, yeah. like when he did that, dude. Like at that level, NBA Madison Square Garden alley oop from half court playoff game, that yeah. whole thing. Like, yeah, to to hit a three in a big moment is just a sick. There's there's also like there's no substitute for this because comedy, like you get that feeling, but the whole the whole job is to remain measured. You know what I mean? Like, right. so you get the stay big explosion, yourself, right. and but you want to stay within it and then move on to the next bit and all that stuff. There's no substitute in basketball or sports for the true abstract primal scream that you're able to let off <laughs> after you do something good. Like, you can't just like hit a punchline and then be like, <gasps> no, how great would it be if the crowd was like this for the punchline, like when a three's in the air and then the punchline hits? Oh my God. Like, you, like, you know the way the, t the benches go nuts? Like, your, your peers, like, you guys are in the back of the room, I hit a joke. And you're like, oh, like I just dunked. And I'm just like this, running back on date. I point to my veins, like, and then I go into my next bit. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sweaty with my father. You're like, what just happened? Oh, dude, that's so. No, but that makes sense. That's why yeah. you kind of did what you did. And like, I remember now being young. I remember being like, not to get again, not to get so heavy, but I remember being young in my dad's car, and we would be driving, and I'd be like, because he loved like. It was actually a part of why I love stand-up because he would take us to see Rodney. He loved yeah, yeah. Rodney. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Eddie Murphy and shit, right? Mm -hmm. But like, I'd be in the car, be like, "I'm gonna put our name in lights. I'm gonna be." And I remember, like, why would I say that young? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I don't know if it was just to be like to for mm -hmm. you, you're gonna see. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, I'm gonna show you. Yeah. But it's a weird thing because it's but, like he didn't. I didn't like not that he didn't deserve that, but he kind of sure. Did, it's like why? Yeah, no, why? I, had the, I had the same There's thing. Like an unsatisfied thing with me. Yeah, right? yeah, I, I had I had the same thing with. I kept telling my mom I was gonna buy her a house. I mean, I watched like Hoop Dreams and every single VHS on basketball and all these kids coming Watching from the, above the rim. Dude, yeah, all the time, game and constantly, shit. dude. Just like it, Michael, I had every single Michael Jordan VHS from like uh, he. Uh, Play, Michael Jordan's playground to air above or above all air or something like that. Beyond, it, it, I had every single one of them, yeah. and I just spend time mimic. I wish I had any coach to be like, hey, by the way, you're not six six or fast. You should, you, yeah, you should. My, my buddy <laughs> just learn Air Buds game. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy was a basketball player, and his mom bought him Air Bud when he was in high school. <laughs> you know, it's like with the dog. Yeah, that's yeah. hilarious. That's very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Your son, maybe you could get stuff off that. You know what's fucking? No, no, it was just similarly. It was like I would watch those things and just yeah. be to my mom, like, I'm gonna get you a fucking house. I'm gonna get you a car. And I do think that fame was a weird thing with my family. Like, oddly, I found out later that they were almost subconsciously pushing for it a little bit oh, with so all three of us. Really? So I do think that that's part of my pursuit as well, because both of my sisters are in show business too. My older sister is a uh, voiceover actress like what really? yeah one of the i mean one of her agency's highest earning people in general like really talented my younger sister does uh narrates audiobooks both oh, of wow. them are also musicians so they're like oh, so this is in your they're the real talent they're like truly gifted people i do what i do but yeah we're we do this and it was they were like musical prodigies when they were like three oh, shit, but, yeah so you know they had music and i played hoops that's interesting that like you guys probably like subconsciously knew that they wanted fame and they yeah want, like you felt that they wanted that yeah i mean that's even kind of crazy even my dad being like i don't care about basketball but he's good and isn't that cool right you know right because he didn't even care what you were doing no as not long at all. as you were elevated <laughs> yeah. to everybody yeah. else yeah yeah wow yeah dude it's funny how everything's connected i know 
everything we do totally it's like has to do with because there's somebody whose dream the way our dream is to mm -hmm. sell out arenas and 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 to be huge and do all those things there was somebody's dream who was to be like a heart surgeon oh yeah like a card yeah yeah you know what i mean well my and, father was an actor so he was uh, like before my father acted too for a while. yeah he did uh like bit parts on soap operas commercials uh, you know small bit tv stuff like that but it didn't really he didn't have a crazy discipline or work ethic or something like that, so he stopped. It was similar, yeah. And then would routinely tell us it was our fault. <laughs> like, yeah, you, you were born, and then I just couldn't do it. You know, it. what am I going to do? i got to be a father. <laughs> <laughs> so he immediately gets into pump and dump, sock broker. You know, it's just uh, all the good stuff. That's so funny. My dad, so my dad went to the Lee Strasberg school mm -hmm. and was like— Oh, that's for real for it, like yeah. really good. He was in class with Mickey Rourke. Right? Oh, cool. And he did really good. And they were like, what do you, and he had an audition for something for like Miami Vice. I actually told this to, to Chaz Palminteri because he knew like at the time, like Miami Vice was like the, yeah. like Miami Vice was like the, it was like bigger than, mm -hmm. and um, my dad's like, yeah, they told, this is a true story. He's like, yeah, they told me to, and, and when you, you made me realize this, when you just said your dad didn't have the drive. Yeah, yeah. My dad was like, yeah, they wanted me to show up somewhere like seven in the morning. Like, I had to be, he's like, I ain't fucking doing that. <laughs> yeah. And so he, he's like, I didn't care. He's yeah. like, I didn't have the drive yeah, that yeah. you have. Like when he hears some of the things that I did, yeah. when he hears that I fucking drove to these places for, mm -hmm. and did all those things like he's just like what you did you did that yeah and like he was just like i never i never loved it like he could right. do it if, if he got into a scene i think he could do it and do well but he was just like i'm not putting in the fight for it. right I'm not putting in that and it sounds yeah. like your dad the same thing so my dad is super naturally gifted very smart very funny really like boisterous loud irish guy yeah. but yeah truly just was like well as long as this is handed to me then i'll do it right <laughs> Yeah, it's like, yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, no, not at all. Are you cool with him now or no? Yeah, we've actually, we've gotten to be okay lately. Since my son was born, yeah. he, we weren't talking for a long time. It, he was about, my son was 18 months old when my father met him because it was just like, there's just a lot of shit. We have a very intense, violent yeah. past between the two of us. But um, now there's like, he's like not even my dad. Like, like it, it, you know what I mean? Like, I'm the dad. I don't even consider it anymore. I'm not a kid to anybody at this point. It's like, I'm I'm now responsible for my son and this thing. So right. that's given me purpose and responsibility yeah. to kind of get past my own bullshit issues and allow to kind of, you know, cast them aside. And as long as my dad is an inactively poisonous member of our family, yeah. then I'm cool with him having, having contact. You know what I mean? That's awesome. Man. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, you're doing great, man. And, I appreciate uh, it. I'm glad you're on the show and uh yeah man rooting for you as always uh go see him man go get those tickets to the gramercy theater man yeah it's february 25th yeah it's a big deal and it's a great room and to do that in new york city is uh, especially for a new york comic coming up man it's it's a real achievement it's great so congrats and i you appreciate plug, you man? uh i mean here's the, here's the scenario podcast uh with me mike feeney and brendan sagalo and uh yeah i'm all over the road i'll be uh i'm doing rhode island as well i think i'm gonna be in yeah i'm gonna be in seattle toronto all over mike can comedy.com yeah guys so check out mike man check out uh was it here's the scenario here's the scenario, here's the scenario. Yeah. scenario podcast yeah, yeah. with the uh, feeny and Sagalo. yeah you gotta come on man it's uh, fun i'd love it's, to i'd yeah. love to and uh yeah man check me out guys paulverzi.com all the dates uh i want to thank everybody who continues to watch the netflix special nocturnal admissions it's still doing great people Looks are fantastic. still finding it thank you yeah. man uh and uh yeah man it's 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 still going really well so check that out and uh, check me out in Chicago at Zany's March 2nd through the 4th. Then we're going to Rhode Island and I'm doing one night in um, Denver and a bunch of other shows. So go to paulversi.com for tickets to that. Check out the Anything Better podcast. Uh, we're doing our Super Bowl picks soon. Oh, this will come out after that, so it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, Till next week, I'm out of here. This is TVE. Rate, review, and get it on iTunes and Spotify. Uh, thanks to my guest, Mike Cannon. I'll thanks see you guys me. next week.